Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habita fillah a question was asked I'm from Kashmir, uh, India I'm suffering clinical depression because of low self-esteem uh, please help me uh, first and foremost as we mentioned many times that the help is from Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, Fi sta'anta fi sta'an billah. Uh, if you seek help or assistance, then seek it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi sta'an billah. And this is a command, this is in the imperative form from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the believers, wa sta'inu bi sabri wa salat, that they. <coughs> Uh, uh, commands Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to seek assistance from him subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, by being patient and with prayer so supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to assist you in all your affairs is the wadifa of the mu'min it is the work of of the believer that is what the believer does and that's how the believer finds relief in this life as well as the hereafter that's how the believer finds success with their lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and success in this life as well as the hereafter and so that's the first point i want to make uh, as a piece of advice secondly <clears throat> There's absolutely nothing that I can do, and I don't think you meant it necessarily that I was to try to save you. But I think what's important, again, is remembering to ask and seek support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously and sincerely uh, with your heart devoted to, your, devoted to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a second or third point I want to mention, and it was so beautifully articulated by... Uh, Brother Joe Bradford or Sheikh Joe Bradford, one of the uh, former graduates of Jama Islamia, he did a master's and he is known for his fiqh and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him. And he was being interviewed by the brother Sajid Lipman on his channel. And I advise you to go to, there's a series that he has called the Imam Initiative. And it's good advice for those people who want to be working in Dawah, you know, after they graduate from the Islamic University or any Islamic University or anything related to Dawah. You know, how are you going to survive? So there's a lot of beautiful um, uh, clips and information and advice regarding dealing with those issues. Now, let's get to the point. The reason I mention that is because I only had a chance to listen to just uh, two of the clips, you know, for maybe eight to ten minutes, something like this, and one in which he addressed it very beautifully, and I've thought about this, and this situation has come up many times, that he mentioned about one of the, job, the, the jobs of an imam, that he is not... Although the communities expect him to be a counselor, he's not in fact a counselor unless he's trained professionally to be one. And that because the point is, is that basically people who are graduates or people who have studied and done Talib al-Ilm, their fin or their science or what they specialize in is in their studies, in their Sharia studies, in Aqidah, creed perhaps, or in some people it's fiqh, some people it's hadith, some people it's all of those, depending on the level of their knowledge. And that is outside the scope of their, really of their duty, although communities expect they want advice. And likewise, people want advice. And it's great when we can offer advice for those who are doing any kind of dawah. But that doesn't mean we're qualified to offer advice, for example, Things that have medical, uh, uh, you know, have uh, repercussions or not repercussions is a better word, but things that, uh, you know, are outside of the scope 
of our studies and abilities and that we shouldn't really advise for. You can't advise without knowledge. Likewise, you don't go to the doctor to get a fatwa or get Islamic advice the same in the same way that you don't go to the sheikh necessarily to get medical advice or to get uh, banking advice except for maybe a hukum shara but you're not going to ask him you know perhaps some other details about your account and this and that and the other and what's the best way to invest or something like this but rather you're going to look you should go to those people of that fen those people who are the people of knowledge in that science and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions fi kitab al-kareem fasalah li dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun ask the people of knowledge if you don't know but if you're into you're looking for health benefits from herbal tea for example you don't go to the sheikh necessarily unless he has uh, experience in that maybe he's into hijama and he's into natural medicines but if he isn't he's he doesn't have knowledge in that science his uh, science is the study of the shara and so the point I want to mention is that if it is as you say, my dear brother, that you're suffering from depression, then you need to, you know, deal with things as best as you can Islamically to make sure it's not something else, the evil eye, uh, you know, jinn, things like this, reading Quran, you know, supplication and dhikr and asking uh, going to people of knowledge there in your local community who can possibly help you too. And then I advise going to, if possible, a medical, I mean a, uh, a, a psychologist if, if need be to help you with your depression. And that preferably a Muslim psychologist, a practicing Muslim psychologist, not just one, his name is Abdulaziz, and this, this one's named Muhammad, and this one's named this, but actually a practicing one who can hopefully combine both the, some of the Islamic, uh, you know, put things in perspective Islamically, as well as the, what you need uh, in order to cope with depression. And if that's not the case, then you need to go perhaps it'll be a non-muslim counselor or a non-muslim psychologist if you don't have those other resources because they specialize in that they specialize in uh the various types of dementia and depression and psychological disorders and what have you so they are the people who can help you with that as far as you as it seems that in your discussion with someone that you uh, the self-esteem issues that also relates to your what your peers are doing. If we go to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he said, look to those beneath you. And this is because when you look to those above you, meaning above you in status, above you in, in, in your eyes, you're going to feel down, as you mentioned. And it could open the door to envy. You know, to wanting to remove the ni'am from them. And it, it can open up all kinds of shar. But if you look to those who are beneath you, the people who don't even have a job, you're comparing your job to their job, but you have a job. How many people in the world, how many millions of people who want to work can't work? How many millions of people who just want food have no food? How many millions of people that are oppressed that can't even do anything without someone, someone's foot on their back and their neck. So then you look to those who are beneath you and that will make you more, uh, uh, more grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is in accordance with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said and in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. So that is my general advice and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgive us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to be satisfied with his divine decree as that's a part of Iman. As the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in the hadith of Jibreel and when he mentioned the six pillars of Iman, he said in tu'mina bi qadri khayrihi wa shar to believe in the divine destiny, the good and the bad of it. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.